Welcome back, Flare community. Today we have the third and final installment of the Kings of Strategy interview. Now in this one, we're gonna sort of delve in a little bit deeper into the tokenomics, and we're gonna sort of discuss this idea of KingCoin and what it actually can do, all of the use cases and benefits. So let's jump straight in. So what's good guys? Um, of this section, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the tokenomics. So I'm going to start things off and ask you uh, basically to just explain the tokenomics uh, and how, how everything's going to work with Kings of Strategy. That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, we haven't beat this one around a thousand times. <laughs> so it's, it's still, um, it's still in, 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 you know, we expect to finalize in the next week to 10 days, but uh, we're struggling with a zero. You know, do we add a zero or do we not add a zero? No matter what the number is, do we add a zero or not to the total supply? And so that's, um, I guess, the first biggest question. The, the second um, answer would be we're, we plan to distribute it over a 10 year period, 10% a year. There will be a, a percentage each year allocated to fan revenue that is distributed to the, the top level assets. Those will filter through to the individual assets via payouts and that. We've also gotten some allocated for prize pool supplements. So if certain competitions uh, that are higher level will have extra coins, uh, tokens, um, incentives for winning we've uh all allocated some to artists to contribute to the um to the ecosystem whether it be uniforms and shoes or um or saddles bridles hats you know golf it. courses yeah. whatever we uh we've even considered giving tokens to top level asset owners that they can then allocate to artists to create their environments but we, um, we, we've got about six or seven categories that, of percentages that the token will be distributed to, to in order to gain, you know, different um, benefits in the game, whether it be, you know, distributing to token holders. Oh, the other one is subscribers. So this is another benefit of early subscription. Yeah. We are going to uh, distribute 10 percent of the total supply to subscribers over a 10 year period. So the first year of the 10% the distribution, 10% of that will go to subscribers. And so if we did not sell out of subscribers, and when I say sell out, uh, 10,000 was discussed as, as being the cap, um, then the the lower amount of subscribers would get to split all of, of those of those tokens. So it incentivize people to subscribe. And in theory, if the token becomes worth much, the subscriptions will be free because you'll you'll buy your subscription, but you'll receive tokens distributed. Yeah. And most likely we would think that will offset that or cover that. So um Yeah, you know th that's a that's a really good uh, concept, and you know you, it seems like you've covered all the bases to like really uh, make the full ecosystem thrive. Um, and you know the the early subscribers are definitely going to benefit, um, especially like you say if it does gain this traction. So, um, as you say, it's it's called KingCoin, um, and it's obviously an integral part of uh, Kings of Strategy. But could you highlight on some of the use cases, like when the uh, the recipient receives their KingCoin, what can they do with it? Yeah, well, uh, we hope to to have it integrated into some of the decentralized exchanges that we expect to be coming to the Songbird and Flare networks. Uh, we will also be denominating the top level assets that are for sale in KCoin. So uh, users that want to purchase a top level asset will have to purchase it with KCoin, and so that will create demand for that uh, for that token. Also, if users want to earn those ownership points to, to participate in the community assets, they will need to hold the token and provide liquidity. Uh, that's an, another use case. And then we are also going to have a, a royalty on the individual and top level assets when they are sold. There will be a royalty and a percentage of that royalty will, uh, will contribute to the tokenomics. And we've talked about burning a percentage of that. And then we've also talked about escrowing a percentage of that royalty 
royalty. And by escrowing that royalty, that would be locked up until year 10, because after that, we need to make sure we have sustainable fan revenue to continue to distribute, you know, past the, the 10 year tokenomics distribution. So we've kind of thought that the, uh, the royalty income could be used to kind of pre-fund the future uh, fan revenue, so to speak, for years, you know, 11 plus, and, and community governance will come in to, to kind of how it evolves, so to speak, from there. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, something else I was wondering is, um, is uh, KingCoin actually just going to be a fixed supply? It's not going to have any sort of inflation as well, or is it going to be a defined supply? And like you say, the possibility of burning. So in fact, it could potentially be deflationary, if anything. Well, what we have kind of envisioned is, is, is a maximum total supply. And then when you burn it, that just frees up the ability to mint more and stay under the maximum total. So we wouldn't need to do that until year 11, once all of the tokens were distributed. And so if we had been burning, let's say, you know, 2% of the royalty and we had been, uh, um, or 20% of the royalty and we had been, um, escrowing 20% of the royalty, then by year 10, we're going to have a lot of money escrowed and we are going to have burned a lot of tokens. And so we will then have both of those um, funds for the community to decide how fan revenue evolves, so to speak, from, from there. But um, the there's also going to be a percentage of the royalty that is going to be returned to liquidity providers as stake. Artist. Oh, an artist. Yeah. So we have, this is still early. And so I don't want to get into too many details, but we had talked about having an artist royalty pool where artists that contribute would, would receive a token that represents a percentage of that royalty pool. And every time that there's a sale, part of the, of the royalty would go to all of the artists, you know, based on their holdings of that coin. And so that would be a tradable coin that, you know, artists could, or anyone for that matter, but in theory, it would be a, a share of the royalties. Yeah, nice. I really like that. Uh, so moving on to the next question, uh, what is the relationship between Kings of Strategy and Best FTSO? You know, Best FTSO being the signal provider for uh, both the Songbird and the Fly Network. And is there going to be any synergy between the two? Uh, absolutely. And so ultimately, uh, Best FTSO is being developed by the same parties that are developing Kings of Strategy, which is ourselves and, and some, some help with others. But we envision uh, Best FTSO delegates receiving, um, I believe it's one extra attribute point per week if they maintain a certain level of delegation with Best FTSO. And so um, by you know, delegating to us, you could have extra benefits in the game and, you know, and progress a little bit faster. Um, there's also some talks of booster NFTs, which might allow a user who holds that certain NFT to progress more quickly in the game, which, um, if example, you have a, a, a basketball camp um, NFT or a horse training center NFT, maybe you get a small boost in your training each week and you might improve just a little bit faster than maybe someone who doesn't have that. And so, uh, but all of the distribution plans of those kind of things, again, we wanna make sure that we get out before we start accepting any subscriptions. Yeah, for sure. If anybody has seen the best uh, FTSO NFTs on their site, those things are absolute fire. Yeah, you know, and I think this is the, the best FTSO is the only one that's offering these type of uh, additional incentives. Uh, and it's just really refreshing to see. And I'm very excited between the synergy of the two. Um, and that, again, is something unique uh, to both Kings of Strategy and best FTSO, so this, this idea that you can uh, influence uh, two different things. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see that come to fruition. Um, I'm going to tease, I'm going to tease a little something. There's more in the pipe. That's all I'm going to say. Ooh, so. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we'll see what comes, comes of that at a later date, I'm sure. Um, so 
Uh, I finally, I just want to ask um, a question about uh, Kings of Strategy. Now, it's initially going to be launched on Songbird, and it's also going to be launched on Flare once the Flare network actually launches. But will there be any difference between the two instances, you know, two different networks? And if there is any differences, uh, could you just elaborate on them a little bit more? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we're between two... We need community feedback on this because what we are considering is running a half scale Kings of Strategy on Songbird and a full scale on Flare. And when I say a half scale, the the number of top level assets. And so because in theory, we are going to accept subscriptions on Songbird and allow people to mint token or to mint uh, individual assets. But we had kind of envisioned the top level assets would be launched on Flare and that the players would then be able to, to be migrated over to Flare from Songbird at a later date. But we've considered doing a, a half scale minor league on Songbird and then allowing those players whenever they're ready to move up to the majors on, on Flare. And so I, I that's where we're leaning, but it's you know, we're, we're, we're struggling with the digital scarcity and if you have half scale on songbird and full scale on flare is that too many top level assets uh and so that's where we're trying to strike that balance yeah no that's really great and um yeah i guess the people can that that want to suggest more they can come over to the discord and uh definitely have their own input and i'm sure that will uh definitely be considered and and actually, if we're going to go down that road, there's one more question that I've been struggling with, and I still don't have an answer that I'm happy Let's with. Let's hear it. Let's hear and it. That is, if we're going to breed horses, so male and female horses, yep. then if that, that horse, after it's done competing, is going to have value for a while until all of its breeding is used up. I can't, we can't have that and not have that same concept with the golf is, basketball uh, players yeah. <laughs> or football players. Or, so then do we create a whole women's league or we talked about maybe making only a women's golf league and then um, the users that had women golfers would be able to, um, you know, work out uh, an arrangement, so to speak, with a, <laughs> a, a, a male athlete to, uh, to produce uh, a, a prospect, a prospect, a mini golfer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because but we don't want people to just go to the the women's golf league and just get a bunch of women golfers because they're going to be more valuable because there's not as many women. And if you have a good, you know, woman competitor, then from a you know mating standpoint, you're going to you know, be valuable, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, that's something to something to think about, out. I guess. I told you we went down a lot of rabbit holes <laughs> since the first. Well, meeting. we have to keep the balance, and the problem is if you don't come up with a way for the 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 team game players to retain value after competitions, you then incentivize people to not play that one and play the other one, and so we've got to keep the balance. And so that's the only thing I haven't gotten a really satisfactory solution to yet. Sure, sure um so let's just round up with uh one closing question uh what is the best place for people to come and find more information about kings of strategy uh website kings of strategy.xyz or discord discord is probably the best place lots of uh great discussions there uh come talk to us tell us what you think tell us what you want to see or what you don't like um twitter we will be growing more active on as we start to bring more of this to the public but right now i would say discord is is probably the best yep sure well if i could tease because i think we're teasing i think we're teasing go on let's have a little tease I think after this airs i think the next day people might get to see the oh the top level nft for the level one subscriber i think we're going to give that Ooh. a a little sneak peek okay that'll be something that. to look forward to for uh all the viewers watching make sure that you subscribe to uh, uh all of the discord channels and all of the social media uh got the uh the twitter accounts as well so yeah definitely look forward to that and guys i guess that's it i'd love to just say 
thank you so much for uh, joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure and very insightful for uh, not just me, but also the viewers. I am very sure of that. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you for your support and for everything we do for us, for the project, and for the community. You, you do a great job, and, and you know the community is much better off for you. Well, I appreciate that. Okay, guys, take it easy. Thanks. Thank you. And there we have it, an absolutely incredible interview. And, you know, we've got this secret NFT to soon be released. Uh, that's something to definitely look forward to. I've seen it myself. It looks incredible. And as I said before, this is part three of three. If you haven't seen the other two parts yet, they are linked in the description of this video. So please feel free to check them out too. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'm out. Mission control. We have liftoff.